sometimes when you're resolving the structure of a protein by extra crystallography, you will come across certain metal ions, or let's say mostly transition metal ions, which are bound to certain residues in the protein, or for that matter, the crystal water molecules that are used to resolve the structure of the protein. So these metal ions have got important functions inside the body or physiological functions, like for instance, hemoglobin. So hemoglobin has a heme moiety, which holds an iron ion. So this iron is responsible for electron transfer, and this can lead to the production of reactive oxygen species and further lead to cell death or apoptosis. Like in our case, in our system with the gelsalin actin complex, you find that the calcium ions are bound to the gelsalin moiety and which further goes on and binds to the actin and which controls the growth of the actin filaments. And this is a biomarker for the ovarian cancer. So these metal ions get recognized. Uh, these metal ions can be designated in the PDB file in a separate uh, record, which is known as Remark 620 record. And as you will see in the slides as well. And Chimera has got this amazing capability of recognizing this uh, Remark 620 record, where they can pull out the information and the details of the angles and the binding sites and the distances of the metals. So we'll just have a look at that and see how the metal coordination states are uh, viewed in Chimera, as well as reaffirm the states, get an idea about the metal geometry bound to the protein residues of the water molecules, if they are correct or not. So first we we'll load up our structure in Chimera, which is the 3 FFK molecule, the PDB ID. And so I'm already in the working directory and I select 3 ffkpdb and then I open it. And as you might have seen from the previous tutorial that I like the representation with the publication one, that's a preset template in Chimera. It says a white background and the cartoon representation or the ribbon representation is beautifully shown out here. You also see the separate representations for the calcium ions, which is basically in a lime green color. And if you scroll further or zoom into it, you'll find that the metal coordination states are already represented. Okay, so in order to re reaffirm the metal coordination states, we'll go to tools and then structure analysis and then open up metal geometry. So this is the option, tools, structure analysis and metal geometry. Once we click on that, you see a new window opens up and on top of that, it starts focusing on the very first metal ion that it finds. So it automatically recognizes this information from the protein data bank file and the designated Remark 620 record on the PDB file. So this is the first calcium ion that's represented. As you can see out here in the metal geometry window, the, it shows that this, uh, the name of the atom is CA, that stands for calcium, and the residue name, the residue number is 756, which is basically a separate number uh, to distinguish it from the protein uh, residues. And then you have the residue name for the calcium, which is CA as well. And then it shows that there are a total of 10 calciums bound to the gelsilin and the actin complex. So uh, five on each of the heterodimer of gelsilin and actin. And gelsilin holds about eight of them, whereas uh, actin holds two of them. So this is just the first of the 10 calcium ions that's being shown out here. And these bonds, these coordinate bonds are shown as dotted lines. And these are bound to specific atoms on the protein residue. Not only that, these are also forming a coordinate bond with the oxygen of certain water molecules, which is also represented in the list. So that's great. So once you go ahead and start clicking on each one of them, let's say you click on the first one, it will show, it will highlight the residue position for the first metal ion coordination site. And this is on the gel cylinder because this is, this is chain A out here. And then you have other information like the distance, so it's 2.15 angstrom. So in order for a metal ion to form a coordination state with that of the any residue in the protein, or for that matter, water molecule, it will have to have a distance of within, let's say, four angstroms, which is in close contact. And then you have the distance RMSD out here, which is root mean square deviation of the distance. And then you have an assessment of the best geometry. So for the first, atom that's oxygen 
that belongs to glycine residue, it cannot determine the best geometry out here. Whereas if you move on to the next one in the list, which is a water molecule, including the selection that you made before, and with the oxygen atom, it finds a best geometry of trigonal bipyramid. Now these geometry names are, uh, you have to go into the details of the geometry names in a different uh, table altogether. So th they have a different tables, which annotates the geometry names for the coordination states. And so you can figure that out from there, but just for information, this is a different kind of geometry from an octahedron, which is the next binding site in the amino acid belonging to the aspart aspartic acid residue. So that's ASP at position 187 and belonging to chain A. And this is an oxygen atom, which is forming a coordinate bond with that of the calcium ion. That's the first calcium ion there. And then further, you can move down the list and go on selecting. So another thing that this feature of metal geometry has in Chimera is basically depicting the idealized geometry. So as I said, this is also a test for validation of the metal geometry. Uh, in terms of the fact that uh, once you resolve a crystal structure, you kind of assess the geometry and it might not be correct as well. It might deviate from idealism, but then again, it doesn't have to be ideal as long as the root mean square deviation of these geometries are within a range, let's say 0.2 angstroms or for that matter, even 0.65 angstroms are not that big of a difference. So this is fine. So in order to depict the ideal geometry, so you'll go ahead and check this option. So once we check this option, you'll find that the idealized geometry, that the geometry that was supposed to be found with regards to that particular position of the calcium ion in this pocket, location in this pocket, and with the vicinity of the surrounding residues that are there, including the water molecules, will be depicted out here. And you can easily assess the, assess the deviation that might be, that might have occurred due to the crystallization method. So another thing that you can do is basically choose a geometry. So the first one, face capped octahedron, is a special kind of geometry that has a coordination number of seven. And by coordination number, we mean the number of uh, atomic components belonging to residues that are actually bonded to that of the metal ion. So in this case, you have one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven. So that's annotated fine, like there's a seven coordination number. And so you have three different options for seven coordination number. So you have to have some preconceived idea or a notion about a metal geometry in order to assess the quality of the coordinating molecules. So if you move on to the next metal, let's say this is one out of 10, if you move to the second metal, you'll find the geometry representation out here for the coordination states and with the different residues that it's coordinated with. So here you have all protein residues. There are no, no water molecules. There is no oxygen of water is actually forming a coordinate bond with that of the calcium ion. So once again, if you go on clicking here, so the first geometry is never found to be best. Uh, it cannot assess the first geometry well, but once you go down the line and you go on selecting more options, it will start to show the ideal geometry that it should have produced. So these sticks with an arrow pointing towards the direction shows the ideal position of the residues that might have coordinated or ideal position of the atoms belonging to certain residues that might have coordinated with that of the calcium ion. So you can scamper through these options, go to the next metal, it will start focusing on the next metal and then further down you can have a look through all of the metal coordinating residues and you can make an assessment and a test for yourself with regards to what is the idealized geometry of the metal coordination state. As you can see in calcium number five, which is also bonded to the ATP, which is bound to the actin. So these are the first two residues are corresponding to the ATP molecule and the atomic uh, coordination state is with the oxygen of the ATP molecule and then the rest of them is water. So this is the reason why this calcium is so stable in its position and also the ATP molecule is not that much of fluctuating. So you can get a hell lot of information out of this 